Bear, who is a social media expert at Storm Products. So we're going to sit down, we're going to have a conversation with them and learn some more about Master, learn some more about Rotogrip, and things that are coming out from those companies. We've got some great bowling going on too. we got Walter Ray Williams there. And, uh, you know, it's awesome to have you guys in the, in the booth today. We definitely appreciate uh, uh, you guys coming in, especially you, Kyle, who actually are bowling this week, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always yeah. love that. I always love to be in the booth. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. We love to have, uh, have you guys come in and speak to us. So maybe we'll start with you first, Kyle. Uh, you bowled a spot, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you saw. Well, you know, I've seen the lanes you know, a little bit different than you know, a lot of the guys we got on tour, you know. Definitely was trying to throw the older resin, you know, the earlier resin balls, and a lot, a lot firmer. And on the fresh, you know, the back ends were very crisp. I mean, you know, the ball hooked from anywhere, you know, any part of the lane, pretty much. And uh, middle of the block, I ran into a lot of transition. You know, seeing a lot of, seeing a lot of the friction and the oil. The, just a big puddle for me. You know, at the speed, I had a little bit of problem getting the ball, getting to the pocket. But uh, and you know, ended up grinding back out in the end of it figuring it out, but as far as the other guys go, you know, hooking the lane, you know, the friction, you know, just, they start throwing to the gutter and they just kind of migrate left, and, you know, they strike a lot. Right, right, right. So, you know, Blair, as, as in charge of social media for Storm, Roto Grid, the whole shebang here, explain a little bit about uh, kind of what your role is there. Sure, so I'm here this week to make sure that I get the players as much coverage on our outlets as possible and you know I'm, I'm walking around talking to them hearing what they see on the lane hearing what balls they're throwing um, we got we have a lot of new uh, releases from Rotor Grip a lot of those have hit the lane today we've seen the critical a lot um, to the kernels earlier uh, so yeah I'm I, I am the social media the voice that comes out on on Storm and Roto and you know we're always looking to hear honestly from our fans um, you know we want to hear from from them and hear what they want to see. Awesome. That is awesome. And actually, uh, you actually have a, a you're a three time academic All American, correct? Right? I am, yes. And from what school is that again? The Ohio State University. What, what school? The The Ohio State University. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I bolded. I bolded Ohio State for four years. I, uh, uh, I didn't, I, you know, I, I, I play the lanes. I, I'm trying to make my way out on the PWBA floor, but I'm still learning just the rest, of, like the rest of them, or the rest of them out there. So. That's awesome. You've got a degree in social communication as well. So not only do you, not only do you do the social media, but you actually compete. And you have some success. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's the. I, I try to, you know, I, I want to be able to talk to the players about what they see on the lanes, and I I want to be able to share it with with the world socially and you know I want to make sure that people know that there's a bowler as the voice of these products. Let's talk a little bit about Master. Tell us a little bit about you know some of the products that Master offers, some of the some of the things that, that are coming out from Master Union. Sure so um, you know all of our products can be found on bowlwithmaster.com. Uh, Master's been around for 45 years. It's a uh, it, it's a storm entity now, um, or, you know, for, works with Master, and um, all all pro shop operators, uh, if they become a store VIP pro shop, they, they have access to the, the Master product, um, you know, and, and we're really, with Master, if you have any, if, if pro shop operators or any, any bowlers have any ideas for us, you know, we're always looking for new ideas to bring to, to Master, and you know, that, that's the biggest, biggest thing. We have a lot of, we have cleaner, we have uh, the puff balls, the rosin bags that you see a lot of the guys out on tour using, and that helps with feel for the players. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your hand feels the same every time that it, it goes into the bowling ball, so we, we help with that, and we have, you know, the shoe cover, the, we have uh, some wrist braces and wrist devices to go with it, so, yeah. Basically, all of, all of the bowling accessories, and so yes, Master exactly. really is the accessory brand or the accessory division of Storm. Exactly. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. And Kyle, I know as a as a
conditioner. Wait, what's your what's your conditioner? Huh? Afro conditioner. Afro conditioner. Anybody who has seen Kyle or knows about Kyle, they know Kyle has the coolest Afro on tour. Like there is no cooler picture of an Afro other than Kyle. Yeah, it was pretty funny when I was looking for, for Kyle to jump into the, the booth earlier. Everyone was like, how, how did you lose him? So, you know, you can see him from a mile away. I'm like, yeah, I know. I got that. <laughs> and to step into the back tail to not be seen. That's awesome. Kyle, that actually is, a, is a, also a very famous professional bowler. That'd be true. Maybe tell us a little bit about kind of how your father inspired you uh, in bowling. I mean, you know, growing up, you know, that was about one of the only things I did. You know, I was going to the, for the regionals on the weekend, you know, watching bowling, <coughs> going to league, practicing, you know, down there. Tuesday night, Thursday night, watching bowling, and, you know, so that was my life. And, you know, just seeing him, the way that he interacts with everybody, you know, what, is what really inspired me to bowl and, you know, to have fun with bowling. You know, that's, that's all he did, you know. His, his goal was to have fun, you know, to entertain and then to bowl good. You know, I'm, I'm slowly learning that, you know, I still, you know, have tend to take my struggles a little bit more than he did, you know, so I could always find the, the funnest way, but, you know, he's, you know, my, the guy I've looked up to, you know, my, the guy I watched bowling growing up, you know, not just because he was my father, but the way he was on the lanes, off the lanes, he was a, a big fan favorite. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and you know, it's kind of cool because you, you, your style, your, your tenacity, your, you bring a lot of energy to the lane, so I know... Uh, for me, when I'm watching bowling, you're one of the guys I'm looking to see get on the lanes because I know it's, you're always going to bring some entertainment to the aspect of the game. And I know your father did the same thing, so it's kind of cool to kind of see that kind of pass down from, from father and his son. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it's it's great. You know, I you know, wish some more guys, you know, would bring a little more pizzazz in the bowling, you know, but, you know, they have the, the, little, the professional side, you know, of bowling, you know, you know, I understand that. But, you know, it's just good to see a different, you know, a different thing in bowling every now and then. I think it's always good to spice it up a little bit. Agree 100%. If you guys are interested in finding more information about Team Fish as an example, where would they go? Uh, TeamFishBowling.com. Okay. Okay. Definitely want to check that out for sure. Uh, definitely a, a kind of one of those things where, you know, you and a couple of your buddies kind of started and it's just growing. I mean, it's just blowing up. You see a lot more people kind of joining in, a lot more people trying to you know, hey, they want to they want to become a member of Team Fish, and, and, and it's kind of cool to see that kind of happen. So yeah, I, mean, I don't have a fish name yet. What the heck? Oh, they got a fish name. Oh, they got a fish name. Yeah. Gotta get a fish name. No, you know, you know yeah, exactly. And you guys do shirts, right? Yeah, you know, we have shirts available, and the, we actually just started the the grouper tab, the grouper oh, part of Team Fish. Nice. You know, people ask them how do they become part of Team Fish. You know, that's, that's something we just started on the website. Have the following, you know, have like a monthly email recapping the bowling, you know, things bowling tips and you know just following up with everybody throughout the throughout the country you know because we're located in you know, a lot of different parts you know we do a lot of bowling in different parts of the region so you know it's just you know we got a lot of good things going you know and we're all you know working hard in our bowling you know that's the biggest thing you know we're all still you know striving for the same thing you know striving for the title you know we just like to have a little bit of fun yeah absolutely yeah and i think you know at storm that we, we find players that really are you know they love bowling Deep down, and that's, that's really what Team Fish is about. You know, these guys are out here, and they're bowling, and they love it, and they love the lifestyle, and they found friends together, and you know, they group together, <laughs> swim together, you know. Um, but and, and that really, like, talk about at Storm, you know, Bill and Bard are really the best owners that we possibly could have, and they really, they really strive to make everybody, everybody understand. You know, they they care about the people, and they care about bowlers, and. Um, it just it goes all the way down, and I think that everyone feels it. I don't know. I definitely felt that you know, in my trip, you know, just the family aspect. You know, it's something that, you know, we, as, you know, as Team Fish and Storm, you know, shot for, you know, we're all family, especially, you know, on the lanes, off the lanes. You know, that's always a, a big part of all you know, in my region. I always get that whole family. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, Bill himself is an accomplished bowler. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, it starts at the top yeah. all the way down. Everybody there is an accomplished bowler, has their own, has, has had their own success in one form or fashion. Right. And, and it is kind of interesting and neat to kind of see, you know, Storm kind of do some of the things they're doing, like picking up uh, a young talent like a college troop or, you know, having stars like a Belmo as an example. So it's kind of cool to watch some of the things that, that happen uh, over there. And it, it is kind of cool to watch see the success you guys are having. Yeah. We are, you know, we're the bowlers. Come, and, and that's, you know, at the home office, they're all, we're all bowlers. We, we really 
you know, we believe that bowlers need to help represent bowlers. So that's, that's really what we, we strive to do. And, you know, we, we try to give back to. In, in October, we had our uh, Paint Lane Pink initiative, which was phenomenal this year. And we did the Paint Lane Pink auction on Facebook. It was the first time that we ever did that. Um, we gave away a, or well, we, we auctioned off a pink high performance bowling ball secret for and, and cover stock. And, I mean, it was, it was unreal the amount of money that we were able to raise for that. So it's, it's just, it, 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 we just try to get back all year long and try to do polling things and get back at the same time. One of those members that is uh, part of the Star family that is not necessarily domestic is international phenomenon, Star Bear. Yep. He happens to be right now on Extra Frame, one lady team that she was a six pin here. Yeah, and he had an awesome week at the U.S. Open. Uh, Month ago, or however long ago that was. All the all the tournaments they run together, it seems like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I know it's Christmas coming up here or sometime soon. Is it? Are you sure? <laughs> that means that the year's coming. That's about all I know. I know, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, so, on the way in, flying in to uh, Reno, uh, I got on the plane and I ran into Cameron Doyle, and then and, and we stopped in Las Vegas. We pop off North Vegas and we get off the plane, and then I run into Cal Drew. Uh, run into the pro. <laughs> yeah, I saw the pro. I was like, what's going on? And then, sure enough, like as soon as we land, there's like another seven or eight guys right there. Yeah. So, literally, I mean, it started off as just like it was, it was two, and then, and then you, you had a buddy with you, right? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, David Shen, so then it was three of us, four of us, and then when we get there, now it's eight or ten of us, and we took a picture before we actually got on the bus to ride over to the hotel, because we're all staying at the same hotel, and there's like 15 people in that photo. I actually posted that photo uh, on social media and tagged and everybody like could tag it, and we had like 500 likes. Yeah. yeah. So, because everybody knew somebody in the picture. That's so, funny. you know, it's kind of funny, you kind of mentioned about family, and you mentioned about, you know, uh, things that are going on in bowling, and it's one of the cool things about bowlers is, a bowling a collective is kind of a big family because you get to see a lot of the same people in these same type of environments. You know, I saw you last month and, and we were in uh, uh, the U.S. Open, you know, in Texas, and now we're on the West Coast together in Reno. So, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm still, like, the U.S. Open was my first event as a social media person, so everyone was very welcoming. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's great to, it's a great feeling to be out here. Bowling is a, a great sport to be part of. So let me ask you a question, Kyle. You're a contender. You see what's going on. What did you uh, What did you use today? What were you What, what were you seeing? What kind of were you thinking about uh, motion wise? Maybe you know. Well, I mean, I uh, started out using a, a lot older ball than a lot of the other players I used a original storm lining. With a, uh, a little bit of a weird layout on it, and that worked really well. I played around with the pitch like a little bit, you know. With, with the being cheated, you know, I'm always going to choose for the go towards the, the urethane aspect of it. You know, it was close to the transition, you know, really cost me 540 in the middle of a block for three games uh, out here on the face. You know, that kind of a block of pressure right there, but we bounced back. But I went with the, the pitch black and the storm lightning for my block. Okay, and that pitch black ball is a urethane ball. Yeah. That's, a, that's one, of the, one of the cool things also when you think about it. You know, back when your father was bowling, right, your thing was actually the high performance. Like, that was like the coup de grace of bowling balls. And now, your thing is a ball that when it's in play, on like a 35 foot pattern like Cheetah, oh, it's great to have it. But at the same token, now in today's bowling balls, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, 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 the high lot the hoop is around the high performance balls. So maybe, Blair, I mean, you're, you're also familiar with product that you can talk a little bit about some of the high performance ones that, that just came out. Sure, um, well we actually had a, a few of the balls today that um, of the new releases that were very successful. Um, Rhino, Cage, and Manu Manuel, oh and I'm going to, Manuel Otelara, um, they both shot 300 on the same pair earlier which is really cool because it was a left handed and a right handed player. Oh wow. Um, and Rhino was using the critical which just came out uh, from Roto Grip, and Manuel was using the IQ430, uh, which just came out from the Storm uh, earlier this month. So that was that was pretty cool. And then we had uh, uh, we had 
Brian Smith shot 300 with the Eternal Cell earlier. Um, Pete Weber had success last night with the, he started with the critical um, at the PBA 50 championship uh, here at the stadium. He started with the critical and then went moved to the, uh, or he started with the Eternal and moved to the critical. So we've definitely been seeing some high performance. Um, you know, the way that, the way that the guys were describing it to me earlier was they were just trying to control the break point whatever way they could. Um, so they were getting the ball in their hands that was reading the lane the right way and, and they could control the break point. And I'm sure Kato was seeing the same thing. Yeah, especially out here on Florida, you, know, you definitely see a lot of a lot of bigger balls, stronger balls, you know, stronger cover spots, bigger course to really slow the ball down on the back, you know, on the end of the pattern with the being such a short pattern. You know, that's you know that those balls definitely fit in there. The critical being the, the very strong roll and medium level ball, you know, the internal you know, with the, the big cover on that, you know, the big core in that. Those two balls I can definitely see why a lot of guys are striking. Yeah, both those balls are actually uh, asymmetrical. The critical yep. and the internal cell are asymmetrical. So the asymmetrical ball in general tends to want to pick up more in the mid lane, give you that more of a mid lane reaction. So on this pattern, like you said, you want to control the mid lane, so you want to go with a bowling ball that is stronger like that. That makes a whole lot of sense. And, and you guys have seen the success of your players uh, that are using those stronger products. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, I mean, when I look out, I see, I, I, this, this spot, I'm seeing some menace is out there too, which is another asymmetric ball. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, the big balls are, the big balls are rolling down the lane today. You know, I, one of the kind of the pieces that I also thought was kind of interesting, you're not probably seeing a, you've mentioned a little bit, Kyle, but you're probably not seeing a whole lot of it out here quite yet, but you may see it out here later in the week, is that uh, the, the, uh, the IQ 30. Yeah. Can you yeah. maybe explain a little bit about what that means, what that's all about? Sure. Um, the IQ 430 is a, it, it is similar to the old, um, or the previous IQ 4 curl, the gold ball that was really successful for a lot of players. Um, you know, the, the cool thing about that ball is, it's our 30th anniversary of Storm, and uh, we really wanted to honor Storm and make this ball that, you know, the 30th anniversary. So if you see the ball, it has that uh, 30th anniversary emblem on the side of it. Um, it's a really, really clean, clean ball. It really is clean through the, the front lane, and you'll see that skid slip that a lot of players talk about. Um, you can definitely, like even I, and I'm not a real techie person, I can see that shape where it's just straight line and then look right into the pocket. So um, I think I think we'll see that. I think we'll see uh, quite a bit of that out out here this week for sure. And, and we've had success. Uh, a lot of social media wise, we've had a lot of people write in with success with that ball back at home in the league. Um, I've seen a lot of 300s with that ball, a lot of 800s. Um, so it seems like it's a good. I actually back home, and I, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Buckeyes. So I, <laughs> we had a guy back home who we all kind of kid with him because he'd never had a 300 before. And he was a, he was a good bowler. He just could never connect, and he just shot one a week ago. That he could So that was that was a pretty cool, cool yeah. moment for him. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that impressed me uh, at the practice session yesterday, I was watching a lot of the people bowl, and I watched you bowl, Kyle, and you know you have a very high rev rate. And typically, people assume that if you have a high rev rate, you don't know how to play. Right you don't know how to get your ball in the gun. You don't. You just can't do that because your rev rate's too high. And I literally remember watching you throw the ball and peeling it off of the gutter, but your feet were you go further right. You were you were right at twenty the entire time. Yeah, I mean, you know, norm, you know, that's the one thing that's you know, been known, you know, and always very different about my game is you know my my ball speed you know, because I tend to want to race the foul line at times, but. You know, with my ball speed and the rev rate, you know, but that's I go back to growing up watching watching my father bowl, you know, being one of the straightest players on tour. I don't know if maybe I learned that, you know, not knowing it as a young you know, as a young bowler growing up, but I also growing up throwing plastic till I was twelve years old. Just yanking it, you know, right up the head thing. So that kinda of, you know, thinking back, you know, I kinda of wonder how I got, you know, so good at throwing it straight. You know, that's that's the two things I put together. That's that's where I say my my straighter game came from. And that's, that's kind of interesting because you this is your what year? How, how many years have you been on tour? Uh, the national tour I'd say it's 
about three years ago. This is my fourth World Series. You know, I was kind of, I only bought a few events my first year or two out. I, I, this will be my second full time year. So, you know, so you've been out here full time for two years and you already have a title. Yes. I mean, that's phenomenal, bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean you think, when you put that in first, how old are you? 24. So, you're 24 years old and you've already achieved success at the highest level of the game. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, you know, back in the summer, you know, the summer swing, it was a pretty, you know, amazing stop. You know, it was a, a lot of, a lot of feelings running through. You know, just thinking about, you know, that I, I did have a national title. You know, the one thing that we all strive for, you know, and dream of, dream of doing. You know, and now that goal set. You know, the goal, you know, the goals are higher now, which means the work is only doubled now. Because the work I put in to win that title, uh, I need a lot more than that now to, to continue on. So, you know, it's just more work. You know, more more work and just keep shooting for more. That's awesome. Yeah, I like your mindset there. I mean, it's one of those things where you, you, you have the right, you have the the mindset of a person who is in their 30s or 40s and has worked for 10 or 20 years on tour, and you have that mindset in your 20s. I mean, you're, you're not even in your mid-20s right now. So that's awesome. That's awesome to see and it's awesome to hear. And, you know, I'm sure uh, you've got a lot of fans, obviously, because of your personality and because of the way you can kind of work a crowd and work a group, so it's really cool to be able to see you have to success at such an early age. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, it's great, you know, I always, one thing I've always, you know, been, always been taught growing up, you know, to stay humble, you know, that's one thing I always strive for, you know, I'm blessed to have the talent, you know, and be able to compete out here, and, you know, the fans, that's, that's what's bowling, you know, that's what bowling is all about, you know, without the fans, you know, we don't have much bowling, and so that's why, you know, you always, I always say, you know, you need to give back to the fans, so. I mean, it's not going to take any time to sign some autographs, take some pictures, have a conversation. That's, you know, I think that's what all professional bowlers should be doing and you know, wanting to get back to our fans. Like, that makes bowling. Absolutely, absolutely. You have, a, you have a tattoo on your right arm, and that tattoo says, never give up. Explain a little bit about that. You know, the, you know this tattoo, you know, about yeah, never you know, give up. Going, I was going through, going through a few things, like, you know, bowling related and you know, non-bowling related. Yeah, it's just a, a great, you know, a great saying, you know, I told myself, you know, because I was kind of in a slump as well in bowling, you know, everything was kind of just getting frustrating, but we'll never give up, and, you know, I've used that time and time again, you know, looking down bowling tournaments, you know, getting pretty frustrated on the lanes, you know, just, it's always right there whenever I'm getting set up, so it's not hard to miss, you know, being on my forearm and whatnot, and that's, that's a, a saying you can always use, you know, for in life in general. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the beautiful, that's the beautiful part about it, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things where seeing that helps to reaffirm to you, you know what, I'm not going to say that, you know, you know, that's awesome. You know, one of the beautiful things about Extra Frame is you get to get extra insight, we give you extra insight, you're getting great quality bowling, you can head on over to XF2 if you want to watch some bowling over there too. Now, we're not getting any commentary over on XF2, but you can watch some additional bowling um, over there, we've got... Awesome, Jeff Bigger. He's actually changing the screen up for you left and right, which is one of the few things that uh, you can only see here uh, on Extra Frame. Being able to give you a lot of additional bowling, so we definitely uh, appreciate the support. Um, and, and, and just having you guys kind of listen to us talk here while we're watching some quality bowling. We've got uh, I cannot pronounce his name. I know uh, Shuichi Heki. Ah, pretty good. That's, That's awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. With the front seven. We got Josh Fletcher here. He's going to shoot himself in the fourth So we talked a little bit earlier about Team Fish, and we talked a little bit about there are some other members. Why don't you mention some of the members of, of Team Fish that are bowling? All right, let's see. Uh, I hope I don't think you, you may. You don't have to mention everybody. I got to listen to the last five seconds. I mean, I definitely have you and Carl Fletcher, you know, and Anthony Thompson, the two guys you know, I always work with. Uh, you know, some of the the guys back home that you don't normally ball a lot of besides Jeff Evans. Uh, Chris Arcaro, a couple guys back home that uh, we always, you know, we've grown up on with a long, a long time. Uh, Aaron Lorenz, I think, from Ohio, you know, he's been balling really well lately. Yeah, he's out here, you know, but, I mean, we've still got five or six more, I'm sure, you know, around. We're all fishing around, you know, hoping, to, hoping to find some strikes. You know, speaking of another younger quality player uh, who's also part of the smoke team, that was, uh, we just started with Marshall Kent. Unbelievable talent. It's unreal. I would have to say, I mean, 
Yeah, I'll tell you, his physical game, physical game up there with a lot of the other bowlers, I would say. He's, he's one of the, he's very solid at the line, you know, he's in the zone. It was funny, I was, uh, I was hiding up in the stands earlier to do some work, and, and Marshall okay. came up there too, and we both were kind of like in, in camouflage up there, hiding from everybody, kind of watching out, but you know, Marshall, Marshall's always studying, studying the game, studying the other players, always, always watching them. What's going on? So not only is the physical game up there, he's, he's watching and working too. Well, it's a physical game too. I mean, the way you see the lanes and the things you do, things that make it sound really going out. But his his work ethic, you know, I strive to try and work as hard as he does. He's he's working hard at the game, you know, and it's showing. You know, it's definitely showing on the lanes. Yeah, I mean, we we have unbelievable. The players on the form, from the veteran level all the way down to the younger, younger players, it's, it's just unreal um, the amount of work that they put in. And, you know, it's, it's just the effort that they're putting in. We see it. We really appreciate it. Um, want them to continue doing that. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, you know, here on uh, this push, push paired now, 2024, we just saw uh, another small staff who is actually no longer, he doesn't live in the United States either. Uh, we just saw Sir Williams. Yes, Sue, yep. Sue and the, the BFS, as they call themselves, they're, they're, they're a fun group, all the Europeans. Um, we also have Jesper Sensen, who shot 277, 300 to um, start this block. Yep. Yeah, that's like 254. Yeah, actually, Jesper Sensen is actually leading. Yeah. Uh, the tournament right now. You're right, Kyle. He's at 254 that third game. He's at 831 for his first three, uh, followed by Marcus. He's no Sweden. I'm going to mess his name up. Jansen. Jansen, okay. Uh, with 779. So two Swedens actually on top. Uh, 831 and 779. Paul Morse from England at 761. And Luke Hooking from uh, Vardem, New York at 754. Ronnie Sparks Jr. Is a tie with her also at 74. So your top five right now are currently averaging 251. Uh, right behind uh, Ryan Sparks and Scott Newell, he also is averaging 251. So interesting change because a game ago there were 15 people averaging 251 or better. And then in one game we went from 15 to 6. So interesting uh, to see maybe if that's a scoring pace situation or that's just the simple fact that I mean. At 250, bro, your average, you're, you're striking at least 10 times a game. That's I mean, a lot. It's, it's a lot of strikes. You get two misses in the game, sooner or later you're going to get a third one. Right, right. right. So, it is, it's going to be interesting to kind of see how the pace is overall. The, the number to get to is the top 24, of course. Um, the A squad is done, so they are kind of sitting and watching. Uh, Tommy Jones right now is tied up for 23rd, currently at 238 average at uh, 716. So, uh, interesting, it'll be interesting to kind of see how this whole thing kind of shakes up. Uh, currently, we're going to be able to see a couple of other higher scores. Uh, we've got a couple of people that are on screen, so maybe we'll be able to, you know, kind of transfer over from one to the other for you guys to be able to see some of these, uh, these great scores you guys are going. So, Kyle, of the new balls that you have acquired, because I'm sure you've acquired very, uh, a couple of them, you know, the new motor grip and the small ball that just came out. Do you have any of that right now that you say, hey, that ball is probably one of the balls I'm going to go see pretty quickly? You know, the one ball that, that, I've, that I've really drawn to like so far is the, the critical, actually, the new Rudder Grip release. You know, being being a low RG ball, you know, that's that's definitely one of my favorites. Oh, so, but it's got out on the front line. Very, very critical. critical. Very, yeah. That was critical. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. But uh, that, that's the ball that I tend to like the best, considering it being a lower RG ball with my higher ball speed with and uh, the differential being you know, such a large amount. You know, that ball definitely seems to, to give me the motion down the lane, you know, anytime I need it, whether it be on the, the, tend to, the medium patterns, you know, it tends to burn up more, and then whenever you get on more oil, it still hooks. You know, and it, it still, still gets, you know, it's still very clean, you know, being a, such a big asymmetrical ball. You know, it, it was, I was blown away just a little bit that it was the ease that it got through the front part of the lane with it being such a strong ball. Yeah, that's a very interesting combination there. You know, the RG on that ball at 15 pounds is 249. The differential, like you said, is very high. It's at 058. So the limit is actually 60. So that ball is almost as high as you can get. The uh, mass bias there is also 13. So that's a really good combination of numbers. 
Um, as a former ball designer, I'm very much into the the numbers of the bowling balls, as you guys are well aware. So that's a very uh, good combination. Makes a lot of sense why you like that like that bowling ball. And also, now, this is kind of one of the first times, to correct me if I'm wrong, Blair, uh, but that Roto Grip has done a, a asymmetric ball at that upper mid and that secondary tier it, price point, right? It is the first time. Yep. So uh, it's the first time we've put an ASIM in the HP3 line. We heard from, you know, we heard from the field that they actually wanted that, the pro shop, and, and the consumers wanted it, and we listened to it. You know, we're always trying to, to give the bowlers what they want, so we're, we're always listening. <laughs> Awesome. We're gonna have a chance to be able to watch uh, uh, potential high score here. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Kyle. Do you have any? Because you know I, I'm a bowler too, so I have like my own little bowler superstitions. So do you have any bowler superstitions? Uh, not really. Maybe just the way I wear my hair. You know, whether I want to throw it out or you know, leave it. What's the? Uh, what what, what kind of helps you determine that in the morning? Like you wake up in the morning and you're like, do you want to throw or not? Throw? So what is the determining factor? No, I mean, uh, I guess sometimes it depends on how good I think I'm going to bowl in the morning. You know, today, you know, I definitely thought I was going to come out striking, so I wanted to make sure that the, the pro out, but that didn't work out so well. So we'll probably uh, clean it back down to Mars and you know, make sure, you know, make sure you know, see how it goes. So it's uh, pretty random, you know. Superstitions, I don't really, you know, don't really have too many of those. But I guess it would just be, you know, the way I wear my hair. You know, that depends on how I bowl them. Okay. Oh, dynamics of it. Such. Well, I will tell you what I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of the Afro. I'm a big fan of your Afro in particular. I think uh, there's a lot of ways to, to mess that up, so to speak. And I think you're one of the one of the few people that I've seen do it that does it the right way. I well, thank you. I, I think proud of my. I mean, we, we've talked about his hair, but I'm a big fan of his outfit. I mean, come on. That's true. He's definitely very colorful. <laughs> he lights definitely up never, the lane. Yes, you've never <laughs> seen Kyle shoot bowl. There is part of the video that is available yeah. uh, for you to be able to see him bowl, and I will guarantee. You well, and did you just post on social media that, uh, you know, High Five has to match them to your fans? Yeah, I have a bunch of new outfits released for this week, so it should be fun, fun to release the, the next outfit for a few days. Pretty awesome. Excellent. We'll get a chance here to see only 27 more pounds of baby up on me. Shuichi Heggie. Shuichi Heggie. Shuichi Heggie. Actually played in a little bit. I say he looks like he's flying left in 20. Looks like he's going to pick him. Yeah, he is going to pick him. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Solid. 